show with Dr. Kojo. I'm your host, Dr. Kojo. We're back talking about ADHD, mental health, relationships, life dating. We talk about it all. So I'm excited to have you all here. Uh, you all know how it goes. Go ahead and leave your location uh, in the chat so I can see where you all are checking in from. And let's get started. Alexa, volume four. I got inkless in the sky. Shani telling me she love me. Woo! Macon, Georgia. San Marcos in the house saying ADHD is expensive. Yes, that's the topic. We're going to be talking about how expensive ADHD is tonight. Rhode Island, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York. Uh, thanks from Atlanta. What's up? What's up? Heavy Snow, I appreciate you. Macon, Georgia, like I said. Uh, Orlando, Kentucky. Westchester, Pennsylvania. Portsmouth, Ohio. Someone says ADHD costs everything. It is pretty damn expensive. Salisbury, Maryland, Massachusetts, Northeast Georgia, South Carolina, Gilbert, Arizona. Okay, that's a nice area. British Columbia, Canada, Chicago, Ottawa, Utah. Krista says, you're going to call it my impulsive spending. I can feel it. Well, Krista, you're telling that yourself. Krista, you're telling that yourself. I didn't say it. That's you. That's you. That's not me. That's you, Krista. You're telling that yourself. Happy Monday from the Florida Keys. JD, what's up? How y'all doing? Iowa, Saskatchewan. Okay. Wow. Maine, Arkansas, Charleston, South Carolina, Clearwater, Florida. Okay. Newark. All right. So we have people from all over. A hey, shout out Nashville, Tennessee, Maddie. So we have people from all over, you know, the world, you know, mainly North America. We have people from all over the world. And tonight we're talking about the true cost of ADHD, right? So you know, it's it's a blessing, right, to get a, a diagnosis in today's day and age. Even with all the mess that we have and with all the, the different videos I post and the other people who post content like Dr. Koja, right, uh, it's a blessing to be able to get a diagnosis, you know. So once you get a diagnosis, you know, I, I'm thrilled for you. And then it's time to figure out what we can do to help improve the quality of your life, right? But you have to keep in mind that ADHD can be super, 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 super expensive. You know, and for somebody who, you know, you get you got diagnosed and then, you know, you're getting ready to move forward with life. It's tough. And even before you're diagnosed, right, you realize that there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay for ADHD. And that's why, you know, sometimes we get on here and we talk about ADHD superpowers. Last week, Thursday show was, I know, uh, I titled the three key ADHD superpowers, right? Hyperfocus, empathy, compassion, things like that. But there is a price to pay um, when it comes to having ADHD. And that's what I want to, you know, um, talk about tonight. And people are leaving a lot of great comments. You know, normally I start off with like, my little monologue. But let me let, let me see what people are talking about. And then let me go into my, my monologue. Um, someone says, uh, <laughs> I spent $75 a month on shit I never watched. There you go. Expensive. Molly says it's stupid expensive medication plus four appointments a year. To be a lot of prescription, a P test once a year, and uh, insurance covers part of the meds one appointment. Oh yeah, I have thoughts on insurance, but that's not what this show is for. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, weapons, if you never take. Um, Vyvanse, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Vyvanse is expensive, yo. You know, and hopefully there's a generic that comes up one of these days. Josh, yee! <laughs> what's up, Josh? Um, and Christopher right here. Let me zone on what Christopher said. Christopher says ADHD's cost is so much more than just money. I'm happy that you mentioned that. And I got I got an article pulled up here. Um, let me get that off. I don't want that sound. I got an article pulled up here that talked about the cost of having ADHD. It's expensive to, to have it, right? You between a doctor's appointment, between the medications, between the groceries that go bad, between the you know, late fees, right? I pay late fees all the time. Um, you know, parking tickets, I pay those things too. Uh, and these are things that could have been avoided with proper planning, but, you know, I accept the condition that I have and I just, I just work with it. But even beyond, 
money. There's a cost to pay with ADHD, you know, and the first thing that comes to mind is time. You know, sometimes a lot of people, you might have that time blindness where, you know, you're sitting there, you're doing your work, it's 11 o'clock, you know, and then you just like close your eyes, open your eyes before you know it, it's like 6 p.m. You gotta go pick up the kids or you have to start doing your homework. And before you know it, you're like, what happened to the time? You know, like the time just escaped you. And then you have to, you know, then you, you're not able to sleep well throughout the night because you try to catch up. And it's that constant, you know, game of like cashing up, being behind, cashing up, being behind. Uh, and those things make it more expensive, um, you know, when you have ADHD. Devon says, I have very expensive hobbies. Respect. Um, Jennifer says, uh, keep going. Jennifer, I appreciate you. Mrs. Sorensen, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Nikki says, life is beautiful now that I'm medicated properly. You rock my socks up. <laughs> I got to give you a love of the show. Someone says, relationships are strained all the time. Yes, with ADHD, it can impact your relationships, you know? Um, maybe you're paying money to go for marriage counseling, you know, like everything costs money, you know, and that's the thing that I want people to know, like if you're here, right, if you're watching my content and you're part of the ADHD community, you already know these things, right? So you're here for validation, right? You're here to see that the other 700 people who are watching right now, um, you know, can relate to you, you know, and then they can leave their feedback on things that they've gone through, right? It's validation. But for those who don't know, um, is you know, I'm here to shed light on how expensive it can actually be. Um, time, self-esteem, yeah. Um, not just for that, yeah, not just financial costs. Um, it can definitely impact you in so many different ways. Um, let me see, outside of money, uh, yeah, outside of money, uh, rejection, sensitive dysphoria, and emotional regulation problems it cause a lot of stress and pain. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure if it's Andrea or Andrea. Um, you know, that name was always tripped me up. It was a beautiful name, Andrea, Andrea, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, you know, um, there's a price to pay, you know, like if you lose friends, right? Or if you have a hard time making friends because of your ADHD and, you know, you feel like you're socially awkward, that's a price to pay. That's more than just money, you know? So this is late fees. Yeah. There's so many things that can make it, you know, expensive for us. Um, having a, a ADHD, uh, and we haven't even talked about the impulsive spending, right? You know, uh, you go spend on like a Valentine's Day or or Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving or a tax free weekend, and then you know something's on sale, right? It normally costs five hundred dollars, but for this weekend only, it's on sale for one hundred and ninety nine dollars, right? And you you go crazy, you're like, I'm gonna buy two of these because it's on sale for one hundred and ninety nine dollars, right? So it's five hundred dollars, and you got like a sixty percent discount. It's now down to two hundred dollars, and you bought two of these devices, right? But what if you didn't need a single one? Now you wasted four hundred dollars, right? But you thought it was on sale. You thought you were getting a good deal, right? Maybe you didn't think it through, or maybe you didn't check in with somebody. So these things all make it uh, expensive for us. Uh, Drew says it has cost me relationships and time, right? And if you feel like your ADHD has cost you your relationship. You know, especially if it's a relationship where you wanted it to work, right? Um, and of course, everyone wants the relationships to work, right? But sometimes you feel like maybe the breakup wasn't your fault, right? Uh, or you feel like there were things that you could have done better if you just knew, if you had more insight into yourself. Um, so when you look at it from that perspective, it's, it's quite devastating. And people DM me, you know, all the time and they'll say things like, oh man, like, where was this video four months ago? And I was like, ah, you know, I, I did my best to put it out there. I wasn't, I wasn't fast enough, but, um, you know, I, you know, I did my best. And, and I'm getting this comment right here from Mike. ADHD and depression has cost me my marriage and kids. So this is just, this is what I was talking about, this type of comment. Um, it, it's tough reading this because obviously it's, you know, if, you know, this individual had known ahead of time, you know, we could have, rallied together as clinicians and providers and helped them out, you know, and, um, and we can't do, we can't undo the past, but it's about setting ourselves up for success in the future, you know? So I'm, I'm sorry that that happened, Mike, and, you know, whatever we can do as a community to help educate and, um, you know, to prevent more things like that happening is what we should do. 
uh, ADHD has had a had a huge cost in my education. Okay, the cost of a relationship is also monetary because if you live together now, you've lost that additional. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I didn't even think about this one, Kate. Ooh, what a good angle! I, I have to give you a love of the show. Wow, wow! You're right. You're right. You know, if your marriage dissolved, right, and you feel like ADHD was behind it, you know, um, then that's a whole nother salary that you have to account for. Um, yeah, so it, it goes deep. It goes deep. Cost me my full ride scholarship because I was undiagnosed and couldn't cope. Now, as an adult, going back, I have to pay. I wish I knew where I know back then. Right. So, all these people who are leaving their experiences, it's on us as a community, you know, to educate, you know, whether you're sharing my videos or whether you're sharing another ADHD specialist videos, right? You know, Dr. Hamdani, Dr. Shepard, um, you know, uh, or if you, if you like Dr. Uh, Russell Barkley, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's on TikTok, but um, Dr. Holloway. Um, so there's so many different, you know, professionals who talk about ADHD and just, you know, sending that video to somebody could help, um, you know, because once you have that aha moment and then it clicks for you and you get help, then you're like, OK, I didn't know it was impacting me like this. Um, and uh, it cost me my marriage and kids. Oh, wow. You know, so a lot of people are having this shared experience. So I think that that's why it's good to have. Look, it's good to have this safe space because, you know, like this is, you know, like my I don't want to say little bit. This is my late night show here on, on Facebook. But, you know, this is a safe space for people to come in. To you know, feel that validation because you, you you don't feel better, you know, um, just by watching this, but knowing that other people have gone through what you're going through, and that you know they're making progress, it's going to be kind of like inspirational for you. Um, I hate when my phone goes off, you're messing it up for me. Um, cost me every relationship. I'm not married to the Lord. Everyone says I'm extra. He doesn't think so. He thinks I'm great. Well, Wendy. I think you're great too. You know, uh, it's just about finding somebody who you know, you're compatible with. You no know, ADHD relationships. We can talk about it all day. Like we've talked about it before on this show. We can we can talk about it all day. You know, it can cost you your job a lot. Yes, Richard, I agree. You could lose your job. Um, you know, just by not being motivated. And every individual who has ADHD, their jobs are different, right? If you're in a environment where, let's say, you know is very flexible, right? And if you don't turn something in by Wednesday and you get it in next week, Tuesday, if there's no penalty, you might, you know, be better off than somebody who has to work like a like a strict, get to the office at eight o'clock, leave by four or five. That could be quite difficult uh, if you do have um, ADHD. Um, get this more of these comments. Seeing the other suffer, um, it, yeah, yeah uh, Kenneth, yeah, I think it helps to know that you're not the only one going through it, right? Because if, let's say, you lost your job or you lost your marriage or you lost your relationship with your kids or if you're, you know, coming up, if you lost a relationship with your, your, you know, your parents, your superiors, your coworkers, you, know, you might have a lot of, like, blame that you put on yourself. Um, but now it's, it's good that you know what's going on. Um, sometimes I think I'd rather be single, and I think it's because of ADHD. Yeah. So look, we're gonna when it comes to ADHD relationships, I could really like. I mean, on this show, I want to talk about things more than just ADHD. Like, if you know, I call myself the Hollywood mental health expert. We want to talk about everything, you know. But just off of ADHD relationships, we could have a show topic every single night, you know. And I know many people who. Uh, sometimes we want to just be single, you know, because they don't want to bring their ADHD problems in a relationship or the other person on the flip side doesn't get you based off of the people who haven't gotten you in the past, you know? So this is definitely something that, you know, we have to talk to and, and um, bring more awareness to. Um, what about having other impulsive feelings, not just wanting to buy things? Uh, yeah, Holly, you're right. Um, when you say impulsive feelings, not just wanting to buy things. Are you talking about, you know, cutting people off mid conversation? You know, that could cost you relationships, right? Um, impulsivity within um, so many different things, you know, that could, uh, you know, be expensive, impulsive, you know, impulsive shopping, impulsive sex, impulsive, anything that is not really well thought out um, could be 
potentially, you know, um, devastating. So if you give yourself time to think about it, you know, all these things that the aforementioned things aren't bad things, but you just kind of want to think about these things before, um, you know, you do it. So it says, it costs me so much, including sleep. That's when I grow tolerance to Adderall and Andrew Detox. Brianna, I'm sorry that that's your experience. And, you know, I mean, you mentioned the Adderall too. So, uh, you know, obviously I can't, you know, comment on people's medication and things like that. But, you know, this is an educational point. You know, like I tell my patients not to take the cycle stimulants too late, you know, because it can, you know, make it hard for you to sleep at night. Um, let me see what some other... Uh, comments uh deja williams nice to meet you too <laughs> nice to meet you i appreciate that and uh, holly yeah holly the impulsivity that comes with it and and that's what some that's i think that's where some people maybe even some clinicians some kind of get tripped up with adhd versus bipolar right the impulsivity obviously the manic episode is what distinguishes like a mood disorder, like bipolar from ADHD. So like a clinician shouldn't, a mental health specialist, right? Shouldn't miss that, you know, at least in my opinion. Now we could, we're not, we're not like we're human. We could, but we shouldn't, if that makes sense. So a mental health specialist, you know, if it's like a family doctor, you know, they see all kinds of things, but like a like psychiatrist, psych NP, psych PA, you know, any type of psychotherapist, psychologist, you know, they sh shouldn't miss Really shouldn't miss it. Um, um, let me see music. Uh, yeah, it's CJ, M music can be very helpful for a lot of people. I, I'm I'm a big fan of music. My house is rarely ever like just quiet. It's rarely ever just quiet, you know. And um, Diana says, I thought this is just me. Thank you. Yeah. So this whole community, right? You know, people who are either on the, you know, the this stream, right? The two to seven hundred people who join or the 10,000 people who watch like, you know, within 24 hours or within a week. Um, I think a lot of us who are engaged in this content have a lot of shared experiences, you know? And um, let me get some more of these. Um, job hopping, ooh, because you get bored, because you get overwhelmed. That could be expensive too, right? You know, because at least for those of us in the United States, our, for a lot of us, our employment is tied um, our healthcare is tied to our employment, right? So, like, you have to go get a new job. You have to be there for like thirty days or sixty days before they give you health insurance. And you quit that job. You have to go to another job, and you don't have health insurance for like three, four months. And you're like, oh, hopefully nothing happens because I don't have health insurance now. Like, it's it's this cycle and it's over and it's over and it's over. Um, Ali says maybe that's why I'm single forever. I don't I don't want to I don't want to say all that, Ali. I don't want to say all that. You know, uh, you can't say single forever because. Like time is like the clock is still ticking, so we don't know what forever is. You're just single at the moment, but um, you know that's why with ADHD, like we're talking about how expensive it is, but it's important. Like the way you talk to yourself, like you want to you want to boost yourself up, you know. You want to you know because you don't want to think get to that mindset. Of, oh, like I'll be single forever, blah blah blah. You know, you want to you want to hype yourself up a little bit. Um, Christine, anxiety can get expensive uh, as well, you know, and of course, tonight we're talking about ADHD, but sometimes you see anxiety with ADHD because um, ADHD has a lot of uh, cousins and siblings that, you know, um, hang around. So, uh, you know, it's important to to recognize that it's not just ADHD sometimes, like it's, it's other things. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, there, yeah, perfect. ADHD has many comorbidities. Abraham, yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. And um, job hopping seven jobs last year, okay, you know, and and that could make it frustrating for like like tax season now, you know, having to get all these, you know, W twos from all these different jobs and ten ninety nines. It, it could be quite frustrating, you know. It could be quite frustrating. Um, my daughter has bad ADHD. University is a real struggle. Breaks my heart. Making list doesn't help. You know, Kareen, that's why. Obviously, you know, if you're leaving this comment here. You're already a good mother because you're, you're already on top of it. But, you know, getting ahead to a professional, um, seeing what options are available, uh, I think that that could be helpful. Like when you're in college, it's a good time to, uh, you know, to want to um, to get help. I mean, there's no bad time to get help, right? Melissa, uh, thank you so much. Prior to my mental health, uh, ADHD and autism. Okay. You're helping to change our... Melissa, I appreciate that. You know, I feel like 
um, I don't know. Like, I mean, people watching my content and like, you know, like if this is something that families watch every night, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like the Brady Bunch or like, I don't know, like whoever people would watch on TV growing up, you know, but and now we watch like Facebook and things like that. We're streaming, you know, platforms. So th this is cool that you all appreciate my, my content and the dances and things like that. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Renee. Uh, I didn't realize until my until the last relationship ended how prevalent ADHD has been affecting me. I thought this is just my personality, but realized after how much is stressed uh, my partner, being distracted, disorganized, sometimes depressed, sometimes not, overthinking things about the relationship. You've helped open my eyes to these behaviors. I wasn't sure I had it until seeing some of your videos. It all makes sense now. Renee, I, I, I appreciate that. And you know, um, you know, hopefully this maybe starts a journey for you where you go get like proper help or the proper diagnosis and or confirm a diagnosis and get the help and you know, this, that, and the third. But I'm happy that I, I was able to be a part of your journey. But it's, it's good to know these things because, like I said, ADHD is expensive. And, you know, just talking about, you know, for me personally, like, I recognize it's expensive. Like, I pay, you know, what I would think is a shit ton of money for a housekeeper. And she comes a couple of times a month. But She's it's worth every penny for me because she puts my house in order and I can think I'm good, right? You know, I pay more for convenience, right? Like I would rather um, you know, leave from, you know, I'm a little bit closer to the Burbank airport than LAX. I would rather fly from Burbank than to fly from LAX because like it's just quicker, right? So if I have to pay two or three hundred dollars more, let's say I want to go back to Nashville and be with my family, I'm gonna pay the extra money to get to Nashville quicker. Now, if I went the other way, just a couple more minutes, I would get to LAX, right? But having to go through the lines and everything, I'm like, I'll just go to Burbank and I'll just fly. And I'll just pay the extra money. And those things over and over and over. When you come, when you tally it up, it's, it's quite expensive, you know, but um, at least for me, you know, whatever people decide to do, there's not, there's no wrong answer, right? You got to figure out what works for you. But at least for me, but I figured out that like a life built on convenience is a life that I can thrive in. Like I can I can make these videos for y'all. I can come on live. But if I don't, if I if I'm doing too many things, like I will burn out fast because I'm doing a lot of things. So every piece of help that I'm getting, I need like every single member. I need everything. You know, uh, Abraham says destruction. Yeah, we. We need routine as human beings, and especially with ADHD. And without routines, like you know, ADHD is going to be that much more um, uh, expensive. Uh, and Beth, we're, we're going to talk about that in just a second. What are some things you can do to assist someone with ADHD with things that we're speaking about? We'll talk about that in just a second. You know, because I don't want to like talk about how expensive it is and then just leave out there and say, "All right, y'all." We had a good stream. Take care. No, it's not like that. I'll get right back to your comment in just a second, Beth. Um, let me see. Both my husband and I just got our adult ADHD diagnosis last year. Again, diagnosis really helped with our coping. No wonder we fell in love. We have the same struggles. Oh, okay. Justine, yeah. And look, I think now if somebody thinks that they have ADHD and they watch these videos and they can relate to it and they don't want to pursue diagnosis, I don't blame them, right? Everybody. You know, I support everybody where they're at. But for those people who do get a diagnosis, it's kind of liberating because, you know, you don't, you don't blame yourself for things anymore. And you know that there's an issue going on. So then you can adapt, you know, to the issue. Um, let me see. Uh, Sarah McKechnie, I appreciate you. Um, yeah, therapy with that. Yeah, therapy is expensive. ADHD coaching is expensive. Medications can be expensive. Uh, I always do my best to try and, um, you know, like prescribe the generic versus the brand. I'm always looking for things to make it you know, a little cheaper for my patients. Um, ooh, Jennifer has a good one. The cost and fear, like not starting things or engaging in things due to the worry I will start then stop and never finish them or that the hyper focus will be so bad that I will not do the things I need to do even when some things might be good and positive. Right. And Jennifer, you know what? You you you, uh, you touched on something that I wanted to talk about a little bit. I feel like there's a... <laughs> look, there's no phrase for it, but in my mind, there's like a ADHD potential gap, right? 
when you know you have ADHD and you're operating at like this level, but you feel like you could be right here, right? And the fact that you know you could be here, but you're here is gonna frustrate you because you know being here or anywhere in that purgatory in between from here to there, right? It's frustrating because you're like, oh, if I was only a little bit more focused, I could do this. If I was only a little bit more organized, I won't be missing out on all these chances, right? And those things, you know, you can you can attribute that to, you know, your ADHD, but that's, you know, a uh, cost of uh, ADHD. Well, this is a good question right here. Uh, uh, difference between ADHD coaching and therapy, right? So the biggest difference that I would say is, like, coaching takes, like, your – in a nutshell, this is oversimplification, but coaching kind of takes you where you are right now, and we build out practical things for your future, right? So we figure out how, like, ADHD affects you, and then you're going to build out, you know, you're going to restructure your environment to, you know, for it to be conducive to the life you want to live. With therapy, you know, depending on the type of therapist you go to, like, you, you'll get a diagnosis. We're going to explore more of your, your, your past. We're going to look to reframe your thinking, you know, and uh, coaching is a little bit more uh, actionable. Like you're kind of doing things, you know, it's, it's like a coach, right? Like your football coach is like, hey, we're in a slant, we're in a dig, we're in a, well, the majority of my followers are, are women, so you all might not get the football analogy, but it's, it's coaching. It's kind of like cheering you on, but like giving you some direction um, so you can be your best. Uh, <laughs> why would I use a football analogy? When the majority of my followers are women. I don't know how I would do that. <laughs> and yes, Emily, everybody should check out how to ADHD. I, I did not know. Um, I don't know her name, uh, but I've seen her videos on YouTube. And I was actually in a in like a YouTube uh, Zoom meeting with other creators and some people at YouTube. And they were talking to us about some stuff that YouTube was rolling out. Uh, and I saw that she was in the YouTube call. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool because I've seen her videos before. I've, I've had so many people online. I've had patients tell me to go check her out, and I have checked her out. So I think she's, I think she's fantastic. Um, definitely fantastic. Uh, let me see. Uh, Regina, we've spoken about cannabis before. Uh, the short answer is I'm not sure. I just know that it's not something that you know. At least me, I don't prescribe it now. I still need more information, but I would love to have a whole show dedicated to you know cannabis and, and maybe psychedelics, you know, because the evidence is is not quite there. You know, we go off evidence based information, right? Uh, or, or at least I do. So like I'm I'm always dancing, laughing, and giving y'all tips. And even in the little skits where you know I'm doing some acting, like it still needs to be like evidence based information because uh, misinformation is the worst. So I'm not at the point where I can recommend, you know, uh, a sativa to help you focus or something like that. But um, I, I would like, I would love to, to learn more about how cannabis affects uh, ADHD. I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Katrina says she loves football. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna give you all the football analogies and uh, uh, <laughs> all right, I will give you all the football analogies. All right, cool. Nay, what's up? How you doing? How are you doing? Um, oh boy, let me get to that. A football mom. Okay, all right. So, so everybody's a football fan. Just making sure. Just making sure because you know sometimes I'll I, I forget who I'm talking to. I'll just be you know going to my football analogies. But cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, I'm in three fancy football um, leagues. I'm following. You. <laughs> we know why most of your followers are women. I, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody tell me. I don't know. How dare you? Okay, all right, okay, all right. So, so we get it. Cool, cool, cool. We uh we know that y'all like football. Gotcha. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So um we talked about how uh, let me see. Very expensive when you get impulsive and get excited about things and forget to save money for bills. Yeah. And, and if you're not paying bills on time, you have the little late fee, right? That's gonna cost you extra money. The emotional dysregulation is yeah, Nikki. It, it, yeah, let's say you have one blow up, right, and you lose a friend that you've had for years. That's going to be painful. I don't think you can put like a, uh, you know, uh, a value in terms of money on like a good friend that you had, and then you all got into like a, a big argument. You know, so uh, that was sad. We we are Tessie Titans fans. Oh, Mickey Ficky, 
Mickey, Mickey, you got you gotta <laughs> you, you gotta uh you gotta um you know convert over to the Titans fan, the Titans side. I'm a Patriots fan. Respect. My husband has ADHD. I helped him get diagnosed when we were 19. He thinks cannabis helps him, however, because it's not legal on stay babes. And I, I wouldn't doubt that it could be helpful for him, right? Like I'm not sure, you know, all these different strips, so many different types. Like I'm not sure what he was doing and what you know he was looking for it to do for him. You know, um, so I mean if that's what's working for somebody, I can't tell. I, I can't tell you through my computer screen to do something else, right? But like I know if you know, I'm just going off of what I know. Like, if I had like a patient in my office virtually, like you know, I know what I would tell them. I would just, you know, I would just refer to the evidence-based uh, information. Um, but yeah, nothing wrong with um, you know, whatever you have to do, as, as provided that you feel like, you know, it's something that is helping you out. I just say, you know, I just tell y'all what I would tell my family, right? I'd say, hey, just just check in with with the doctor first, just to make sure, right? Just to be super super sure. Uh, Krista, sometimes I have to tell my kid I need a break from his aggression, being like, yeah, all right. So, Krista, I'm happy you said this, right? Um, because now let's start talking about the things that we can do to make ADHD a little less expensive for us, right? We already know that it can cost you money, it can cost you time, it can cost you relationships. Uh, it can cost you what you you may think is wasted potential, right? So it can cost us a lot. So how do we, um, how do we uh, like make progress there? Spending time. Yeah. Okay. So one good thing. Let's talk about the solutions now, right? One thing that we can do to make it less expensive for us is to be direct with people and ask for people to be direct with us, right? So. You know, with ADHD, it can be difficult to sometimes follow instructions. You know, the more simple and straightforward and short the instructions are, the better, right? Like I have that video, uh, it's, it's here on, on Facebook Reels where, you know, like it's like a little comedy video where like somebody is telling me instructions and they're giving me all these different streets. And like after the second street, like I'm, I'm, like, I'm no longer paying attention. That's how it is. You have to be very straightforward, be direct. Um, that's something that can be very helpful in relationships, right? Especially if it's, you know, you're getting to that point where y'all are serious, you know, six, eight, 12, right? however long it takes to get serious, right? For you, then you have to let the person know, hey, like, I need this. I need this from you. I need to be direct. I, I need you to be direct with me. I can't play mental gymnastics. I need this from you, you know? And for those of you all who can, who you have that relationship with your boss to say, hey, I struggle with this. When you put the spreadsheet like this, I can't get this in time. Like I need this. Being direct and speaking up for yourself and putting those boundaries in place um, can be very helpful. You know, that's like me telling my assistants, "Hey, I'll, I'll take my phone, voice message. I'm like, hey, John, blah blah blah. Um, I'm not going to be able to show up for this and that. So I need you to take care of this for me. Like the language use is important. Hey, I need you to do this." Um, let me know your progress. I appreciate you so much. You know, and sometimes people, if you haven't been direct with them, they'll think that you're being an asshole. Like all of a sudden you're being direct, but no, being direct is helpful. Like that's how you just, you, you, you cut past, you know, the chase. Like you just get straight to it. Like this is what I need. And this is what I would appreciate. Um, direct communication is, it's, it's so, it's so helpful. Super, super helpful. Beth says that she seconds it. Yeah, Beth, you know it. You need that straightforward uh, communication. You need it. Um, it cost me uh, being able to get my kids ability. Valerie, sorry to hear that, and I hope you're uh, hope we make some progress. Um, someone says, do you reply to or even read your messages? Ah, uh, so I will try and go through my DMs just to let you all know, but I don't even know how many DMs I get. Like I get like right now, I'm still getting DMs. It's a lot. There's almost three hundred thousand people here, two million on TikTok, and then almost two hundred thousand on IG. So it's virtually impossible for even my sisters to go through DMs. But I mean, they may go through DMs, um, or maybe they're clicking through. Um, but I don't keep up with it like that. But I will take my iPad sometimes, and the iPad has like a you know wide screen, so I'll kind of see what people are saying. And I'm like, oh, you know, some someone said something nice about me, and I I really appreciate that. But Obviously, I can't give my medical advice, you know, in the DMs and 
the majority of questions I can't answer for legal purposes, but you know, it is good to see that people appreciate my, my content and I'm going to keep, you know, posting it, you know, and keep uh, reaching more people who, you know, wouldn't find this information uh, otherwise. Uh, let me see. Uh, how common is it to stop being interested in sex when you have ADHD? So there was a study, I, I got to find a study, but the study was done on people with ADHD and it, it showed that a good amount of the people in that study who had ADHD also had some sort of sexual dysfunction, right? So um, whether you're, you're losing your drive or your drive is super high, once again, direct communication with your partner, right? Or partners or however your relationship is set up uh, could be helpful, you know? Um, and also let's say you know you have ADHD, then it's, it is, it's not like you just stop wanting to have sex or something like that. So it's good to have that direct uh, communication. And um, how's the people? All right, so I, I don't know what's going on in the comments, but um, I mean, if, if you're new to my channel, we, you know, it's all love out here. And I will say that I have the most supportive community online, you know, in my, you know, in, in the chat room, you know, we have Democrats and Republicans kissing, like everybody is in a good mood. We're all on the same team here. So I uh, you know just anything that could be like transphobic, homophobic, racist, sexist, anything like that. Just leave it out of the chat and let's just have a good time. We're just vibing and, um, you know, we're just doing our thing out here. We're just vibing and, and learning and having a good time. So, yeah. And uh, Freya says, I've lost relationships because of being blunt or direct. And it's funny that you mentioned this because I can see how people would not like that. Right. And I mean, it depends on what, what you say sometimes. There's a way you go about it, you know, you know, the whole cadence of how you speak and, you know, timing is important, but whichever way you say something, you have to kind of get the point across. And um, if you're being direct with somebody and you're putting boundaries in, in, in place that have never been there before, a lot of times you're going to get like some resistance from that person, you know, but I'm sorry to see that that's what happened. Jessica, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, thank you. Keanu Samuels, I appreciate you. Um, uh, Evan says, I've never heard. Uh, Evan, I have heard this, or, or like I've heard it from patients, but uh, if anything, um, when there's some sort of sexual dysfunction, like from what I've seen, like I guess with, with my patients and my clinical experience is more so of like a higher sex drive. That's just what I've seen, but um, I would not be, surprised if some people are losing their sex drive so like you can never it's never like one size fits all right um Brittany what's going on how you doing um how you doing and um so let me see this whole thing is beautiful um uh, Renee yeah I like this look we're just learning we're having a good time we're, I, I'm just vibing like I, I'm in my house is vibing right um, and yeah, obviously nothing, there's no substitute for therapy, but I mean, this is free, right? <laughs> We're having a good time here. We're having a good time here. Someone says, why is sleeping a hard, why is sleeping at night so hard with ADHD is that my brain doesn't turn off. Right. So a lot of different things can cause this. Maybe you have some racing thoughts. Maybe, you know, you've been working hard all day and you still didn't do some things. So you're thinking about things that you didn't do. So it just depends, you know, but this is one of the things that I do want to talk about when um, it comes to the solution. That's why I clicked it, right? You said sleep. Um, because we were talking about how expensive ADHD can be, right? So now it's what can we do to put ourselves in a position to where it's not as expensive? The first one, if you're keeping along, was to be direct. You know, be direct in communication with our family members, friends, loved ones, uh, partners, bosses, teachers, you know. Being direct is very helpful um, because it's going to make things easier for you, like, you know, on the receiving end. And you can also assert yourself and say, hey, I need this. You know, like you can you meet somebody for the first time and y'all start dating or whatever. And then you tell them what you're up to. And then you say, hey, I need somebody who is going to support me. I need somebody who is not going to say, you know, make fun of me behind my back. Right. I need somebody who has my best interest in mind. And those things sound like they're cliche because everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got support. But you're serious. Like, you're like, no, like, if you don't support me, if you make me feel less confident, this will not work, right? That type of direct communication is needed. And when it comes to sleep, uh, I actually saw 
um, research that indicated that one of the best things that you can do for ADHD um, that has been shown to improve outcomes is to get sleep. And sleep, getting, getting enough sleep solves a lot of things, right? Um, it's hard to get out of a depressive funk if you're not sleeping enough. You know, um, it's hard to focus if you're not sleeping enough. Your memory can be impacted. Um, you, depending on, let's say, if you have a bipolar diagnosis, that could be something that induces a manic episode. So sleep is highly important. You know, so this is where, you know, having a good nighttime routine is helpful. You know, maybe you you cut on some Anita Baker, you know, and then you take a shower and, and you know, you watch some funny videos. I mean, that's that's my routine, you know, or you go to the gym, you know, and then you run for a little bit and you come, you know, you wind down the home, you try to spend some time off of your phone. You know, so it's about finding what works out for you. Um, but getting enough sleep is something that can help you not feel the cost of, of ADHD, you know? It's gonna be key because getting sleep will help you be less irritable in relationships, right? Maybe you're not sleeping, right? If you're not sleeping, you're gonna be cranky in the morning. You might piss off your you know, your, your wife, girlfriend, husband, you know, whatever the, the deal is, you know? So you wanna get enough sleep. Um, sleep is the answer for like almost everything, but you do wanna get a lot of sleep. Um, you definitely get a lot of sleep. And someone says, uh, without my medication, I wouldn't sleep. And this is why I always recommend for people to go in and see their provider, right? To go see your your doctor or whoever is prescribing you the medications. Because sometimes people might need a sedative to sleep at night, you know, and regardless of what that medication is, if it's helping you get sleep, um, then, you know, then that's something that I would say is, is quite important. Um, Michelle says, I have, I have ADHD. I found my weighted blanket. Sounds of thunderstorm or ocean waves, lavender linen spray, and melatonin. Okay, wow. So that's Michelle's um, nighttime trippy kit to help her sleep. Okay. Okay. Uh, sleeping mask. All right, so I'm not a sleeping mask kind of guy, but uh, Caitlin, I, I, I support it. The relaxing tunes. Okay. Okay. I don't know what a sleeping mask looks like for real. <laughs> Oh boy. Any tips for Peggy binge eating and hyper emotional responses to criticism? All right, okay, all right. So let's use Peggy as an example, right? So Peggy says uh, binge eating and uh, hyper emotional responses. So so I, I want to like, and obviously because it's not medical advice, I'll take Peggy's information, uh, extract it. And I will say, okay, imagine somebody who struggles with binge eating due to their ADHD and hyper emotional responses. Um, if those, if that's that person's two biggest struggles, how can we get that person from point A to point B, right? So how do we make ADHD be less expensive for you, right? It doesn't cost you as much of your life, right? So looking at the the binge eating, you know, I think it's important to your relationship with your body, your, your relationship with food is something that it's sometimes you need a professional to help you work that through, you know, and there's many reasons why people might binge eat. Maybe you had no appetite in the middle, in the middle of the day because you were taking stimulants, right? Stimulants kind of dehydrate you and they kind of stop your appetite, you know, so maybe you don't have a desire to eat until 7 p.m. and then you want to eat everything, just throwing it out there. Or maybe you just never really enjoyed eating or maybe you do have a, a issue with binge eating and emotional eating and your relationship with food is not as healthy as you like it to be, you know, and in all of those circumstances, I think it's very helpful to, you know, get some professional help because people don't know that eating disorders can be, can be quite severe, you know, and I'm not saying that this is an eating disorder or, you know, um, I'm not saying that the symptom of this individual binge eating is an eating disorder, but it's always something that it wouldn't hurt, you know, to run this by a professional and get that. Um, you know, professional feedback. Uh, so taking care of that would help to not make you feel the ADHD as much. And then the hyper emotional responses to stress and criticism, you know, it's good to evaluate yourself. Like when you get stressed, what do you do? What's the first thing that you reach for? You know, when you, you're criticized, how does it make you feel? You know, and how does that feeling that you have, how does it manifest like outwardly, right? Do you like 
scream at somebody or do you feel like you want to punch a wall or you know whatever you do after you feel that way you have to ask yourself is it helping is it hurting if it's hurting you know and you can cut down the frequency you know on how you do that right then you're already making progress let's say you have like four outbursts a week right four four of them and you cut down to two you're making progress right you're still having the outburst where somebody pissed you off and you're like, man, this is the worst. So you're still getting pissed off, but you're not having you know, as uh, emotional of a reaction. So if that will get you from point A to point B, then I think that would be very helpful for you. So I, I think that, that question is a good question because it can help uh, a lot of people with a lot of insight, right? And yes, I drink water. I drink the water out of the, the gallon. Judge me if you like, but I like to. I try and go through at least seventy five uh, to at least seventy five percent of one of these to one of these a whole day. So I already knocked out one, and I got an extra one out here. You know, water keeps me going in the gym. You know how it is. <laughs> Uh, Cordy, it is a ton of water. It's a ton of water. It's a ton of water. I spilled a whole gallon on my face. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I do, but um, I knew that 282 people were watching me, so I made sure to, like, carefully hold it. I didn't want to, you know, you know, make a fool of myself. But even if I spilled it, it's live. Like, I, I'm not cutting it out. I'm not cutting it out. Um, let me see. I found out that was the most difficult. May I have a sip? <laughs> With your thirst, I'm kidding. Sure. Here you go, Nay. This is ridiculous. Oh boy. Uh, let me see if you were saying. Uh, is uh, this is the isn't. Is it an unhealthy, strange relationship with food typical ADHD? Could it be texture related or so? Uh so Katara, um, that's a nice name, by the way. But um, I mean it depends, you know, like when you say texture, it makes me think like maybe there's some type of sensory issue there. Um, and you could definitely see that with you know ADHD. Um, you know, maybe noises or sounds, or maybe the way some food like feels. Um, could be, you know, it could kind of like turn you off, right? You know, and if you're turned off, you know, when you're turned off, you're turned off. Like you no longer want to eat. You're like, I'm good, you know, I'm straight, I'm fine. Um, let me see, Bonnie. Uh, oh, it, it, uh, Bonnie, look, actually, let me address this real quick. Um, yeah, so Bonnie, this show can go in many different directions. And, uh, oh, yeah, I, I definitely don't feel like I have to, right? And I think it's important in uh, my position, right? Not only as, like, a, a specialist or as a, as a content creator with, like, a lot of followers, but just look, actually, look, as an individual with ADHD, it's going to have boundaries sometimes, right? So, like, when people DM you, right, and you're getting, how many DMs do I get a day? <sighs> if I got, like, maybe 100 at a minimum of day, I wouldn't be surprised, right? But with all the DMs that I get, you know, like letting people know here on live that I'm not going to be able to reply to them or I might scroll through my iPad every now and then, but it's just good to let people know, um, you know, so that way they know that, okay, this is what he does, this is what he doesn't do. But I am here for the people and, you know, I have made a commitment to do this show four times a week. So I have to do it for that, you know, but I don't have to answer every single question. But if I can take a question and make it educational, and let it help out a lot of people. And that, I think that's super dope. I think that's super, super dope. Um, but yeah, but 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 yes, Bonnie, thank you for that though. I think a lot of content creators, uh, you know, we're we're not prepared for, for this side of the content creator. I wasn't prepared for it, you know. I really what I, I mean, I wanted to, you know, to get a lot of followers and I wanted to like move to LA, which I did, but I didn't, I wasn't prepared for this side. So you just have to set boundaries and obviously like you know people say uh you know let's say i get a dm and somebody's like hey i take zola 50 uh should i take 100 or 
Should I switch to Wellbutrin or, you know, should I try you know, select? Some? You know, I can't reply to that question, right? So that type of question, obviously, you know, people know that I mean well, but you cannot reply to that question. And any medical professional in my shoes, I would not recommend that you reply to questions like that. And the reason why I say that is because, well, I mean, if you're a medical professional, you already get it. But when you realize that you have tons of people following you, right? If I say something and I have good intentions, but it didn't come out right, then somebody somebody might think out there like, oh no, like I'm on the wrong medication. Dr. Koja mentioned this on his stream. I need that, right? I don't want to interfere with nobody's care. Like I'm just out here at the crib doing the show, <laughs> doing the best I can do. Um, but yeah, yeah, Bonnie, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Um, oh, it's going right here, Mickey Ficky. Ooh, I gotta give you a, a love of the show, Sarah. That's a good question right here. <laughs> so, we're looking into a lot of different causes of ADHD, right? And, um, the to my knowledge, like the the one thing that when I see like somebody with ADHD come in, the thing that I think about, right, is like what's going on in their family. Any siblings have it? Any parents have it? You know, if they're old enough, do any of their kids have it? There's a strong genetic link with ADHD. You know, so I think that is like as far as I've seen, that's like one of the strongest indicators. Um, and trauma, I'm not too sure what the evidence says. So that's that's why I like the question because when you ask me a question, I'm like, ooh, I'm not too sure. It means I got to get back to the, the, the literature and, and, and look into that. But um, for the most part, it's neurodevelopmental, you know, and there's a strong genetic link. Um, uh, Brittany, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Let me see. Uh, <sighs> Uh, let me get some of these comments. Um, I'm based in Los Angeles, California. We're in LA. No, we're in LA, and uh, you know, I'm from the East Coast originally. So, I got family in Nashville, Atlanta. I was working in Southern Virginia before I came out here, but you know, I, I felt like I needed to be in a bigger city. Um, I just needed more stimulation i need more um and it's not adhd thing it's just i really needed more connections for social media so i wasn't going to get that in williamsburg virginia but it's still a beautiful city i love it and i hope to go back and go to bush gardens when they open up you know it was shut down when i was out there um it was shut down when i was out there all right okay um <laughs> uh, lauren i like this i like this this live gave me the motivation to make my lunch for tomorrow Maybe I'll get to work on time. Lauren, what are you having for lunch? Or if you're still in the, the, the thread in the chat, what are you having for lunch? You know, but if you make your lunch now, there's a good chance that you it'll be easier than in the morning, right? If you're in the East Coast, it's like 10 o'clock. If you're here in California or in the West Coast, it's like seven. So this is a good time to make your lunch. Maybe make like a, a sandwich. Um, what, what would I make? I'm not a cooker, but. Maybe like I take a like a turkey sandwich with lettuce and um, maybe get like a yogurt. <laughs> I mean something super simple, you know. Like I, I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, one of these. Uh, act like I can't even cook like that. So I'm just taking it, you know, one day at a time. And somebody asked about. Oh, okay, this is a good question right here. I think this could provide a lot of value to people. So I may have a lot of content on this. I think. No, no, I have, I have, and I feel like I put it on on Facebook. But you know, should somebody say, "I want meds"? There's things that we can do. Like I said, getting to sleep on time, helpful, right? Being direct in communication, helpful. Uh, cutting out processed foods can be helpful. You know, synthetic food dyes, like you know, all the the brightly colored cereals that they advertise and market to kids. Uh, those things can be, you know, um, you know make it make it more irritable you know uh if you look at um uh like i said processed foods cutting that out exercise exercise is huge like people are like what's the best thing for mental health it's 
is really exercise. Uh, not, of course, like depending on the condition, you know, I don't think you can exercise hallucinations, you know, that come with schizophrenia, you know, and I don't think you can exercise those away, right? But exercise can do wonders for your mental health, right? Um, and this can be as simple as going for a walk. And I actually have a video that's coming out soon. Uh, a couple of friends of mine uh, and me, we created an app, simple app. All it does is the app helps you be accountable. So with ADHD, you're going to need some sort of external accountability. So with this app, I only want people to do two things. You wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, and go for a walk. That's it. If you do that, then 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 you've accomplished your goal for the day. So I want to build a whole community of people, right? If I have two and a half million followers online, can I get at least 500,000? Well, can I get at least 50,000 people in this one group online? Is this app? All we do is we wake up in the morning, we eat breakfast, and go for a walk. Simple. And then that's going to you know, increase your self-esteem. And then, of course, you've eaten breakfast. You eat you a good nutri nutritious breakfast. You know, get some protein in there. Get the energy going. You know, go for a walk. You know, not like a – I mean, you can go for whatever type of walk you want. But go for, like, a good, strong walk. Like, walking as if you're in a hurry. Like, you know, get a little bit of, you know, cardio in. Those are some of the simple – underrated things that, that can be very, very helpful. So um Sharon is Sharon is in. We we got one. We got one. Uh Michelle is okay. Michelle, okay. Someone saying bacon. <laughs> uh let me see. Um I need to ask Megan, yes, we're working on it. We're working on it. I was just texting uh Kevin um waiting for his feedback. But um I mean look to be honest, I'm excited for the app, and uh, you know, I told him that I want the app to be free. Um, you know, I want the the app to be um, I want the app to be free because I don't want people to have to pay for this app, right? Uh, you know, so that's something that I think is going to be very help, even for me. Like, you know, I did I ate breakfast this morning, but I did not go on a walk. So to to keep me accountable, I did not go for a walk this morning. I uh, just play with my dog on the rooftop to get the dog to exercise, and I'll head to the gym after this. But I did not go for a walk. So, you know, uh, if if we had the app set up, you all would be able to see that, all right, Kojo did not go for a walk today, but he ate breakfast, you know. So I, I won't crucify myself over it, but, you know, you know, thanks for reaching out. Hey, Robin, I appreciate you. I pre exercise, 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 exercise. It's huge. It's huge. Um, deer meat sausage with onions and peppers or rice. No, is that good? Deer meat sausage. I've never had deer meat. Deer meat sausage. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think you can knock it till you try it, right? You can knock it. Um, do, 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 do. drinking water because uh, 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 what? Drinking water because Coda's drinking water mirroring. I, mean, I actually, you know what? We should have a water break. Everybody. Pull out your water. It doesn't have to be like this, you no know, big ass jug, but you know, pull out your water, you know, and I'll give y'all like five to ten seconds to, to pull out your water, and then we'll, we'll take a, a water break. Um, Jessica, Jessica Page, I appreciate you. Um, and Jirai has a good question. I'll answer that in a second. All right, y'all got your waters. It's time to take a sip. Cheers. Good to go. <laughs> we are good to go. Um, so uh, Gerard, and um, I think we need to have a, a whole live for this, right? You know, and um, you know, I, obviously, like you know, I can't recommend. I can't even recommend the medications that I do prescribe to my patients on live, but the relationship between cannabis and ADHD uh, is is interesting, you know. And the one thing I will say about this is that. You know, studies have shown that cannabis can lead to like a loss of motivation and people with ADHD might already struggle with that. But then there's people who say that, you know, depending on the strain, they feel better with it. Right. So like, I don't think you can discredit somebody who says that. So anytime, I, you know, I'm talking to a patient, uh, the few times a week that I do get to talk to patients, right. I'm talking to a patient, 
And, you know, we get to the part in the social history where we're talking about, like, uh, um, how old are you? Uh, you know, where do you live? Are you married? Single? Any kids? Any pets? Highest level of education? You smoke any cigarettes? Any caffeine use? Any illicit substances? You know, ecstasy, cocaine, marijuana? You know, just, just kind of, you know, trying to ask, like, you know, you know what they use. If they do say uh, they use, like, weed, I'll be, okay, um, how many joints once a day? Oh, two, three. And then I, my very next question is, okay, what does that do for you? And I think people get surprised sometimes because sometimes they think that I'm going to like demonize them or, or crucify them. I'm not, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to ask, what does it do for you? And sometimes people will say, it helps me do X, Y, and Z and it helps them achieve their desired result. And I can respect that, right? I wouldn't prescribe that, you know, for, for the issues that they were dealing with, but if somebody saying that that helps them out, you you have to respect them and and you know do your best to, to work with them, right? You gotta, you gotta work with them. Um, let me see. Uh, I had my first narcissist um, last summer. Messed me, but I'm good now. I hope you're doing better. Hope you're doing better. Um, I'm trying to zoom through for some comments. Uh, dear me. Okay, I've never had deer meat before. Am I the only who's had not had deer meat? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's fire. Okay. Yeah. So that making me white. <laughs> Are we? Heather, yeah, this is still live. Heather, we're still live. We're still live um, streaming this. And you'll know it's not live when, um, actually, you know, I don't know how you will know it's, it's live, but because, uh, like, I, I only see my lives for the most part. After the fact, but I'm going to my page right now. Uh, oh, no, you'll know it's live because it will say live, like my picture will be circled, right? And um, it will be in red live. So it says Dr. Cody is live now. So, yeah. Anytime you see the little circle, they, you know we're live. You know we are live. Um, uh, I told my my friend told me about you they will be following very <laughs> joy i appreciate you uh thank you very much and shout out to your friends whoever told you about my content i do appreciate that sharon says cheers <laughs> we'll have another water break um uh later on in the <laughs> in the stream so if you missed the the last one uh don't worry we'll have another one i have another one uh and i think the red box in the upper left this is like I think so too, Kate. I want to say I think so. I think so. Um, I definitely think so. And uh, all right, okay, it's, it's a good question right here, Amelia. Can ADHD cause many hypermanic episodes or overlap with borderline? So <laughs> when you say hypermanic, I mean, hi, do you mean hypomanic or uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but with in within a within ADHD, there's no mania. You don't have mania in ADHD, right? Mania is a distinguishing characteristic of bipolar disorder. You know, so you can see somebody in a manic episode do things that are similar to what somebody who has ADHD might do, but you know, the person with ADHD doesn't have that sustained period of mania where they're making these decisions and they're talking faster and they're getting less sleep. Um, so those two are different, and um, uh. With borderline personality disorder, sometimes, you know, you have difficulties in your relationships, you know, uh, interpersonal relationships can be difficult. And sometimes you might see that with ADHD too. So I guess you could say that overlaps, but those two are also like quite uh, um, different. Um, <laughs> my dad tricked me with uh, Vincent and Chill when I was a kid. <laughs> I've never got to try there either. Okay, I, I haven't tried there either. I, I feel like it would be good. I don't know. I think it'll, it'll be good, but um, uh, yeah, Joanne, you're right. You're right. I feel like it would be good, but I don't know. I feel like it might depend on who cooks it. You know, depending on who cooks it. Um, can ADHD? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, ADHD can make it difficult for somebody to have a routine because it's hard to put like consecutive tasks in a row, right? Like, it's an issue with regulating your attention, right? So. As you shift from one task to the next, it can be hard to just go from A to B to C. 
you know, but if you have a simple routine that you can give yourself credit for, that's a really, really, really good, you know, starting point. You know, let me see. Uh, it's not good if you can cook either. Otherwise. <laughs> oh, wow, this type of deer meat, I gotta, I gotta look into it. Oh, uh, Red 40, yeah, the, um, the food dyes have shown, have been shown to increase irritability. I've seen that in the study before. Um, uh, actually, all right, I will talk about this right here because I can I can gain value from this. So, really, it seems to be helpful for them if they've had experience with similar medications in the stimulant. Thank you, Larry. Videos, Meg, I appreciate you. So, pretty much, what I want to take from this comment is that there are non stimulants that can help out with ADHD as well, right? Stratera is the first one that comes to mind. You know, um, it's a non stimulant, it's FDA approved for adults. Uh, but we can use it for kids too. And then you have, you know, uh, atypical uh, antidepressants like Wellbutrin. You can use beta blockers as well, uh, which are blood pressure medications to help out with ADHD. So it's not just a stimulant. So whenever you go to talk to your doctor, just know that if one thing doesn't work, you can try something else. So that should be a takeaway, right? And your doctor will make the call, you know, they'll ask all kinds of questions and, and figure out. You know what's be, you know best for you based off of your history, but just know that there's other options. So that should be, you know, um, it should be like uh, inspirational to you, so you can know that okay, like I don't have to give up. Like I can keep trying different things. Um, uh, let me see. So Nitria says, would you guys let mind listen to some ADHD symptoms that impact you daily? Actually, you know what? I like this. So Nitria, I like this. Uh, for those of y'all, if you want to share, you don't have to share if you don't want to. But if you do, if you do want to share, what are some ADHD symptoms that impact you daily? Uh, she's new; uh, they're new to the game, but still recognizing things that are linked to ADHD. Okay, so Natria, we got you. I'm gonna see if we can um, get some good feedback in here for you. Get some good feedback in here for you. Um, microtasking. Uh, of the permanence. Oh, Kirsty, yeah, I just saw your comment. You know, there's so many things that can affect your relationships and, and your time and money that are ADHD related that we, we don't know. We don't know. All right. So, Sunitra, so to answer your question here, check it out. We have impulsivity, we got mood swings, feeling like I can help everyone, anxiety, hmm. hyper focus. Got overthinking, trouble getting out of bed and looking forward to the day ahead, short attention span, executive dysfunction. Okay, a lot of good feedback in here. Um, trouble concentrating, hyper focusing, impulsive behavior, high sex drive, forgetting things people as soon as they're out of, out of your sight. Okay, being ashamed after being super hyper, respect, FOMO. Depression. Um, yeah, yeah, Sinitra, and that's the thing. Like, a lot of people don't know how deep it gets with ADHD. And it's like people have lived their lives, some people have lived their whole lives not knowing what it was. And then you have this big moment where you realize that you're like, oh my goodness, like it affects all parts of, of my life. And then you start to, you know, do the work to try and get some help, you know, and, and that's why it's good to have channels like this and, and other channels because i'm not the only one who, who does this but just a safe space to where you can you know talk about these things um talking over people impulsive spending you know speaking too loud problems multitasking having a hard time shifting between tasks being late cancel plans do it being unprepared and not ready <laughs> i feel that one I feel that one. Poor follow through, misappointments, anxiety, depression, hyper focusing. Uh, and Sinitra, FOMO as in uh, like uh, fear of missing out, you know, so some sort of like, I would say maybe anxiety over like, what am I missing out on if I don't do this or do that? Um, one of my biggest issues, I'm either throwing plans together or thinking of excuses all week. Ooh, Cameron, all right. Being late, changing jobs often, Ooh. hard time sleeping, 
bad with hidden cues. That's what I was talking about, that direct communication. Losing things in plain sight. That, that's me as well. Um, strained relationships. Can't remember people's names. Feelings of inadequacy. Okay. And I respect you all for your, um, you know, transparency, uh, immobility, mindless eating, clutter and messy home, interrupting, never finishing a task, not understanding others' feelings or feelings they are exaggerating or underappreciated. Okay. Um, Meg says, girl, <laughs> is how you say it, girl. <laughs> The way she said girl, I was like, girl, I was losing things. I imagine that's how you say it. Feeling out of place, not eating. Thinking of things while others are talking to you. Yeah, Lisa, this is something that, um, and we've talked about ADHD relationships, but um, there's so many different ways to talk about ADHD relationships, but this is something that like, has affected me before, right? And I've, I've caught myself doing this, not only in relationships, but like with anybody but like I, I like i've been on like maybe a first date or something like that where you know the you know the girl's talking and she's like i do real estate and then i like this and i like that and, I like that. and i'm like uh, you know like it looks like i'm looking through her soul but like i'm really thinking about should i put gas in my car on the way home or should i put gas in my car in the morning and it's not like I, i'm not i'm not interested in what she's saying it's just that my mind has drifted and I'm thinking about something that, you know, like, like, why am I thinking about gas? Like, I can get gas later, like, like, you know, WTF, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I constantly say, uh-huh. Ah, okay, okay. Um, yes, thinking of something else while talking to somebody. Yeah, and, and that can be embarrassing. And as people, the good thing about when people get to know you is like over time when people know who you are and then they know okay this is renee right renee your, your friend's like oh this is renee, how renee is they're not going to be as like pressed to be like renee hey i'm talking to you you know they'll just be like hey um oh yeah 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 as i was saying you know so that that small thing right there can help out with you know you know self-esteem you know instead of it being like oh renee like you're not, you never listen to me like you're a bad friend and and you've lost a relationship, but now ADHD has become that much more expensive for you, you know? So I think people, having a good support system is everything. Um, forgetting to eat, yeah. Auditory processing, eating fast, inhaling food, okay. Um, imposter syndrome. Standing people up because you forget the date? Is this a thing? You know? Well, I've actually had patients tell me this before, so I know, I know it's a thing. Um, but yeah, you know, that could be embarrassing, right? And, you know, maybe you forgot to put the, the reminder on your phone, right? Like, you forgot to tell yourself that, at, let's say you're in New York, right? You're in Manhattan. You forgot to tell yourself that at 1030, you know, because it's almost 1030 on the East Coast, that at 1030, you were supposed to go um, to the bar on, on, on a date, right? Um, but you forgot to put the little reminder on your phone. So 10.30 comes around, and you're sitting at home with your pajamas on, you got a bucket of ice cream, and you're watching, you know, Dr. Kojo on, on uh, Facebook live stream, right? And then at 10.37, you get texts from your date like, hey, uh, um, you know, um, I'm here. If you're a little late, it's all good, but, you know, I'm waiting on you. And then you're already, like, almost 10 minutes late. So you, you have to first dress up or shower dress up you have to catch the uber and the uber has to take you there 50, it'll take you like a whole 40 minutes to get there and your person's already been waiting for 10 minutes and then you have to like text them and you're embarrassed you're like oh my gosh like i'm sorry like can we get up again um and depending on that person right let's say that's somebody who you thought was super cool and they they wanted to get to know you maybe they had had experiences in the past where when they got stood up that person didn't care. So then that, that person was like, okay, wow, like you set me up, like, you know, cool. Like once we get, once I get home, like I'm probably gonna block you and I'm probably gonna like re-download the app and start matching with other people, right? And you can't blame them because maybe that's what's going on in their head, but you made an honest mistake and you just forgot to put the thing in your phone. 
you know, so that could be another cost of, you know, the ADHD. Um, I would only take the Uber if it was, <laughs> oh boy, forgetting the time. Yeah. Yeah. I can go all day without eating. Yeah. It, sometimes it, some people might have to put a reminder in the phone to eat, you know, and there's no shame in that. If that's how you have to get it, you know, make no you know, apologies for how you have to live. Um, Meanwhile, I'm always early because I'm so anxious. I've seen this before, too. Um, and somebody um, watching this <laughs> watching this chat is driving me crazy. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've been going live for almost three years, whether it's here, Instagram, or TikTok. So I'm used to comments coming in fast. And I mean, I just do my best to pick out things that you know, would provide value to everybody. If I can't get to something, hey, it's not the end of the world, right? You know? This literally happened uh, with me on my first date with a woman I liked. I was late. I put the wrong time. Jessica, did they get back to you or did they block you afterwards? I'm just curious. Uh, I'm just curious. Um, I, I forget the day he called. I apologize. I feel guilty. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, look, these are real life events happening to real people, you know? Um. She is an ADHD. So, see, it could be, but it might not be. But it's just something to be mindful of. Alarms for everything. Ooh. Mm. Tell a story. <laughs> I tell a story and then it turns into five different stories with irrelevant details. I catch myself doing this uh, almost all the time. Uh, Drew, good question. Good question. I I'll answer this one. Um, this will be the last question I answer of the, the chat, but let me go through and get some more. Creating another world in your head. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. That's definitely one. Uh, this whole live stream could be my life story. If I <laughs> Jealous, I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I have ADHD. I have succeeded in life. Sales being a single mother. Carissa, it's awesome. You know, and it's good for people to come out and say that that they have succeeded with ADHD, right? Um, you know, because it's inspirational for people who get diagnosed and then they're like, oh no, I can never have a, a good quality of life with ADHD. I can never, you know, pursue my dreams and goals. And for me, like, I mean, I hope that like what I'm doing is inspirational for people. Um, and I, I hate to make things look easy. So like I understand that I'm in LA and I'm doing photo shoots in like Hollywood or Beverly Hills or whatever, but I like, make no mistake about it. Like, like I I gotta struggle every single day. I have to go through, you know, my ups and downs. And also, like we talked about ADHD being expensive. I've already kind of come to terms with the fact that the way I live is expensive, not because I'm buying fancy things. I don't like fancy things, but because I live a life based off of convenience. And I need a lot of help between assistants and housekeepers and cooks or whatever. I need a lot of help to put me in a position to where I can do this. So I've made peace with that and I, I, I enjoy the system that I have going on now. So uh, it's about finding out what works for you and then you make no apologies uh, for that. Um, see, uh, let's see some comments in there. I love hearing ADHD success stories. It helps me keep up with my kid. Yeah, Krista, there is definitely hope. You know, you just have to understand that your child who has ADHD will need many different things, you know, uh, when compared to somebody else in this class who has ADHD, right? Maybe it affects him differently and he has a different home environment. Same as the other kid. Like, he might be hyperactive or, you know, and your child might be inattentive. So it just depends. You have to figure out what works out for you. It is time for uh, a water break. Everybody go ahead and get your get your water bottles. You know, if you're a part of the ADHD community, whether you're a mess or not, you know, water is good for us. Right? So go ahead and get your, your water. About to have a little bit of a water break. I, I'm going to make this a staple of the show, you know, and I mean, this is my own, this is my show. I created this. So I, I can, I can do what I want. Um, um, I mean, not, anything right obviously like we got a brand to protect but um 
I'm always flirting with new ideas and maybe and we're going to have guests come on. We're going to have uh, guests, therapists, psychiatrists, social workers, nurse practitioners, uh, musicians. We're going to have a lot of different guests and make it interesting. Um, but I flirted with the idea of maybe having a, a musical guest at the end. Or I, I'm always looking to do some different things for y'all. But I, I like this uh, water break um, type of thing. So you all should have your water bottles by now. Let me make sure everybody got the water bottles in the chat. Got sparkling water. Okay, water break. All right, everybody got their water? Everybody has the water? Perfect, all right. Let's go ahead and get prepared. All right, cheers. Water is key. Water is key. Emma, why so? Water is key. No water hydrate. <laughs> Jennifer, I love y'all too. I love y'all too. Dr. Mike. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. It'd be great to have the Dr. Mike on here. Uh, being the profession. And, and with the dance. <laughs> People like that dance. Okay. But, um, there was a question here that I wanted to um, answer. Let me find that question because I think it can provide value to you all. I think it was asked by Drew. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and answer the question regardless because I remember what the question was. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, look, Crystal, water breaks are helpful. Water breaks are helpful. All right, so... All right. So somebody asked uh, why I do this. Um, I think it was Drew. He asked why I do this and what it does for me, I think. I think. But either way, I'm going to uh, answer that. So I do all of this, right? And of course, you know, the live stream, you know, it's another way to to let people, like the people who enjoy watching me, right? So for the almost 300,000 people on Facebook who enjoy watching and then the 12,000 on YouTube and the different platforms, the people who like watching my stuff, you know, this is another way for them to get long form content. I guess even this talk to me and just we're just vibing it and hanging out. So I like the human interaction. So the thing that I like more than followers is engagement. Engagement is good because that way I can see what's on people's minds, what type of questions people have, and then it's gonna help get my brain going. So that way, when I'm making content, I know what to focus on. I know what direction to take the skits in, what characters people need to play. So I love engagement, and that's how I can push, you know, the conversation forward. So I do that um, for that reason. And also, number two, I enjoy doing this, right? So when you enjoy doing something, especially those people with, with ADHD, you know, if you enjoy doing something, it's not going to be difficult for you to do, right? Because, like, you just legitimately enjoy it. So I hope to do more of this type of stuff. I hope to do more of content, you know? And a big part of my day is spent looking through emails and then half of the week, you know, I'm seeing patients and things like that. But I'm always looking to make the content exciting and fun and informative and you know, figure out different ways to throw the dance in there. So this is something that I actually enjoy. And I told y'all, like, I, I don't need anybody to prompt me to do this because I enjoy doing it. But just doing it and being consistent is actually very helpful, um, you know, even for my ADHD, because it forces me to have that set schedule. Like we know every Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. California time, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, I need to be right here, you know, in this seat, um, talking to you all. And maybe if I'm on the go, you know, traveling somewhere, I'll flip up my iPad, figure out a way to, to link up and still stream. But it makes you have to sit your ass down somewhere and to be consistent. And that consistency is the framework, you know, with which I build my whole career on. So it's actually extremely beneficial for me to just come out here and just, just be consistent. I could just come out here and just look at y'all and be like, Chrissy, what's up? Robert, what's up? Maria, what's up? I could just come here and just you know, look at this guy. Now, I wouldn't do that, right? It makes no sense. But just being here and being consistent and doing something that I enjoy doing is helpful. So if y'all can find a version of that, like for you, that could be super, super helpful. You know whatever whatever that is right but finding a, a your own version of that can be super helpful um uh, let me look through some 
uh, gratitude. Chrissy, I appreciate you. Um, how do you get over the things that seem that are scary that seem normal to others, like adulting, making phone calls, applications? Uh, I mean, the the key emotion behind it, right? If it's the fear, if it's social anxiety, or if it's like this trouble initiating a task, I try and do like a lesser version of that of that task, and then it gets me going. So if it's phone calls, talk to somebody, right? Have the conversation that you need to have with your roommate, you know, and then you have to make the phone call to whoever you have to call, right? Same thing with applications, you know, do a little checklist at home, you know, fill that out, something for yourself, and then work your way into getting into the uh, application. Um, yep, yep, yep. Uh, all my texts are, <laughs> uh, all my texts are jumbled. Your speeches are great. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. Um, da, 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 da. How do you plan for your sessions? So for me, um, Megan, what I do is, you know, so up until, up until uh, maybe through two, three weeks ago, right? I was seeing patients in like four or five different states and my schedule got super slammed with social media commitments and other things and having to travel. So I had to talk with my team and, you know, it, it like we looked at everything and it was like, all right, it's going to be very difficult to see patients in different time zones, blah, blah, blah. So I have to cut back on all that, you know, and maybe I'll, I'll get back and see patients more later. I doubt it with the things that I'm trying to pull off. Right. Um, but now it's, it's dwindling. So now I only see patients in the state of Virginia. And what I do is, you know, I have to wake up at six o'clock. I have to wake up at five o'clock California time, right? And either get to the gym for 30 minutes or meditate and, and walk around, you know, um, do something so that way I can be ready for my first patient at six o'clock California time, which is nine o'clock on the East Coast. And that's very helpful for me because of routine purposes, right? And it gets my day going because when you're talking to a patient, you can't be like, yeah, what's up, you know, or you can't be like, Eep. like you have to be professional, right? So I, I got to get the professional Dr. Kojo. Um, so just by having that, um, it just it's like a sense of urgency. I know I got to be up by six o'clock in the morning. You know, so that helps me get my day started, you know, the beginning of the week when I am seeing patients. So uh, that's a little trick that I use. Hopefully it can be helpful for you. Um, I'm not sure what the equivalent would be for you, but um, just having something that kind of holds you accountable could be super, um, super helpful. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Phone calls are the worst. So I'm not a big um, phone call person, uh, but sometimes I used to like dread making them because I'm like, oh, I gotta have a conversation and I get sidetracked. Okay, Drew, that's dope. It got you into urban farming. That's neat. That is neat. Um, and Victoria, uh, ADHD and pregnancy. I will actually have a, a live dedicated to justice. I will bring on. Um, a specialist, a reproductive psychiatrist, um, Dr. Thompson. She's affiliated with UCLA. She's an OG. She's I go to her for questions all the time. Like I would love for her to break down ADHD and pregnancy, uh, and also women's mental health because, like, I have a following of like over eighty percent of women, and I think they would love to know. Um, not that you all don't like hearing from me, right? You know, we talk about ADHD and how pregnancy, you know, uh, impacts it and. The hormonal fluctuations up and down and how it can make symptoms better or worse but sometimes it's better to hear from a lady who not only has treated patients with ADHD but has also had kids of her own so i think that's going to be super super uh dope to have her uh, on as well yeah megan a, a lot of a lot of good feedback in here a lot of good feedback in here cat says I've tried a million different hobbies and they're so fun, but I haven't stuck with one for over a year. I'm now going from basketball to chair. Okay, cat, give it a shot. You, you look, you never know what you want to do, right? And when it comes to ADHD and different interests, like I strongly believe that. I mean, of course, like if you're in grade school, like follow through with the curriculum. Like don't don't skip school so you can like become a, a TikTok star or something. Like don't do that. Like follow through with the curriculum. Do what you have to do, right? But in your free time, try things, right? Like, that's what I've been doing, you know? Like, I've just been trying things and 
You know, like I went through school. I, I spent my 20s in school. I got out of school. I started working. I started to see patients. I did my thing, right? And I was working at a, you know, at a psychiatric hospital. I was loving it, doing forensic psychiatry. And like at that point in time, I was like, okay, like life is good. Like, I, I, like this is what I want to do for a long time, right? And then TikTok, you know, I downloaded TikTok, and that app changed my life. It literally changed my life. You know, I started to post on there after having the app for two months. And then, you know, a couple months later, they invited me to, to L.A. for a creator event. You know, the very next month, we have a pandemic. It forces everybody to be inside the house. And people have nothing to do outside of watch content on their phone. So perfect timing. Everything kind of came together. And I started to get hundreds of thousands of followers. And then I'm like, you know what? I kind of like talking to people online. I kind of like making content. I kind of like doing the little dances, right? I kind of like doing the skits. I, like, I kind of like doing the raps. You know, I kind of like acting, you know? So with ADHD, sometimes you have like a million interests, but we only have 24 hours to do things. So start, you know, do what you got to do first, right? And then as you go, you're going to lean into things that you enjoy doing. So maybe it was basketball. And all of a sudden you're like, no, nah, I think I like cheer. I'm a cheer, right? I'm a cheer. And I, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a do this until something else comes up, right? Um, you know, so, uh, and of course, as you make these decisions, you have to take things into account. Like, you know, people are affected by our decisions. But for me, like, I didn't have, I didn't have a wife. I didn't have kids. So I'm like, all right, like, if this is the time to gamble, like, it's, it's in front of me right here. I can, I can move to LA and I can go and, you know, take a, a severe pay cut and start making videos because nobody's as affected by it than me, you know? So you have to see like what, what works out for you. And then, you know, you just keep going. Um, uh, let me see. Oh, well, I'm not to socializing. I, that can be me sometimes, but for the most part, we've been stuck in the house for so long. I, I like, I like getting out the house and, and talking to people, you know? Uh, one of that live, uh, Becky, I, I, I will let you all know, um, anytime I have a special guest coming on, I will give you all like a heads up, you know, and if you're following along on Facebook, uh, you will see, and I wish that there was a way to like, um, obviously like for those of y'all who like watch me on Facebook, whether you're watching this stream live, like now, or if let's say you're watching the stream on like the back end uh, of things, uh, for those of y'all who follow me, I think when I go live, you get like a little notification that. Like it goes ping and it goes to your phone, um, but you know I'm gonna post like a I'm gonna make it like a status update and say hey, on so and so date we have Dr. Kirsten Thompson coming to talk about uh, ADHD and pregnancy. You know she, reproductive psychiatrist, boom boom boom, lists out her stuff. We'll have like a nice picture of her smiling, where you know her her uh, blonde hair, and then um, we'll have like the the logo. It'll look official, so it'll be a picture like you can't really miss. If you follow along, um, so I'll definitely give you all a heads up so that way you can like set your you know, your, your watch and mark it on your calendar. Because I think like if I was like if I was a fan of this show, I would want to watch it live because I like live interaction, right? I mean, I still might watch it on the back end, but I like live interaction, so like that's what I would be like sticking around for. Um, Emma, Emma, thank you so much. Uh, I hope your husband. Likes the videos as well. And um, yeah, keep sharing it. And this, thank you so much for your attention. You can create an event. Um, <laughs> Amiria, you're right. You could actually create an event. Um, you're right. Uh, I should have known that. I, I think there's a way to create an event. Uh, I, I'll have to look into that. I don't know if this is one of those paid events, but um, I mean, my lives need to be free. You know, like I, I want as many folks to watch. So, like, However we do it, it's gonna be like free for y'all. So don't don't worry about that. But um okay. Oh shit, it's been an hour and a half. I'm just gonna head to the gym. Yeah. All right, I'm probably gonna head to the gym now. So uh Mickey Ficky. Y'all are warriors. I like that. You know, everybody who is going through things like, you know, you all are all warriors. And um, you know, before I end the stream, I just wanna say that. You know, like everybody, even with ADHD, right? You can have two different people who struggle with different things, right? Like a, a 12 year old, you know, 
with ADHD, a 12 year old male with ADHD is in, in the seventh grade, right? He's worried about different things, you know, as opposed to a 35 year old woman who just had her first child and you know, she's postpartum and she has ADHD. So you can have two different individuals with the same condition, but they're worried about different things. It just goes to show that sometimes things are not as clear cut as like it looks on the surface, right? You never know what somebody's going through. You can't really look at somebody and be like, oh, they have ADHD or they have this or they have that, right? That's why it's important to, number one, be kind, and then number two, create that safe space where people can, you know, talk about the things that they're going through. Like, people can be themselves, you know? They don't have to feel like they have to fake the funk, you know? And that's the goal of what I'm doing here. And um, hopefully, I feel like I'm doing a good job, right? But still, uh, you know, there's still so much work to do and so many more people to reach. So, you know, uh, you just have to keep pushing. And as we keep doing this right here, Going live four times a week. There's so many different ways to get to different people and really help to you know make an impact. So I, I'm excited that uh, I'm, I'm excited that I get to do this. Like I, I'm Becky. I'm happy you found me. You know I, I'm happy you found me, and I'm, I'm just happy that uh, uh, Risa. That's a nice name, Risa. I, I'm, I'm happy that uh, you know you uh, you found my stream. This is it. This is fun, right? You know I could not do this if it was not fun. So I do appreciate you all for. Making it fun and making it lighthearted. Um, and I'm gonna stop running my mouth and head to the gym. I gotta, I gotta run, like physically run, you know, and and uh, also uh, live some. You no, know, today's leg day. Today's leg day. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I gotta go, you know, hit the leg day and then and run a couple of miles. So I love all of y'all. I will see you all here tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I actually have a a YouTube dinner and then an uh, Instagram event downtown LA. So tomorrow stream and then Wednesday stream will be earlier than normal, right? So it won't be 6 p.m. California time, 9 o'clock uh, East Coast time. It'll more than likely be like 4 o'clock on the West Coast and then 7 o'clock on the East Coast. But I'll make a stats update letting you all know what time the show is so that way nobody is like flustered or anything like that. But um, I will let y'all know. So uh, I'm so excited you all could join. If you've made through the whole stream, thank you so much. If you came in it, whatever time. I appreciate your attention. Uh, but until tomorrow, peace.